presentarles a Félix Poe, quien es eh, profesor de mérito en la Universidad de Burdeos, Francia. Él pues, siempre ha trabajado en colaboraciones de gráficas y en otros temas similares, es considerado un experto del área. Y ha hecho una labor muy importante en los últimos años en armar este grupo de intercambio y movilidad en Europa, junto con la República Checa, y Barcelona y otros países de la Unión Europea. Este, ha hecho una labor muy importante encabezando lo que les toca a los franceses de estos intercambios. Entonces es una buena oportunidad también para los estudiantes que pues, están pensando en ser francés, pues, es el colchado en, en el pasillo. Si alguien les puede conseguir un lugar allá, es el. Este, bueno, sin más que decir. Muchas gracias, Ricardo, por la invitación uh, a hablar en su seminario. Uh, pero uh, no voy a hablar en español, porque uh, hablo uh, no suficientemente bueno en español para hacer matemáticas con vosotros. Bueno, good. So I will speak in English now. Uh, <coughs> so I will speak about this strong chromatic index of Tarnawa. In fact, uh, we are working on coloring problems for a long, long time. And, uh, This is a nice uh, problem, and I think that I will try to do a presentation. I will perhaps escape the de technical details because it is perhaps not so important. If you are interested, then you will you will go into uh, the paper to read it, and uh, then it will be enough. I think. So. Uh, we are considering graphs. And uh, here it is a uh, not directed graph, it is an oriented graph. And uh, we, we, we call a strong KH coloring. Uh, it is a coloring of the edges of the graph. Uh, so it is a mapping from the set of the edges into 1 to K, such that every adjacent two edges have different colors, so it is a proper coloring. But we want also that if there is two edges adjacent to the same edge, then uh, they are different colors. So I will draw the graph here, and we will try to color it. So I want to color the edges in such a way that uh, the, condition, uh, the conditions are satisfied. So I will take integers. So I will color. So all these three edges must have different colors. Okay. So I must put one, two, three, for example. <coughs> Then here I must put a color different of this one. So it cannot be two. And it must be also a color different of this one because they share they are adjacent to the same age. So it cannot be three. And also it cannot be one. So I, I need a fourth color. Okay. So here it is three. Now I go to this one. To this one it must be different of this one. The color must be different of this one and this one. And uh, also, I take the edges at distance 2, so this one must have a color different of this one too, because there is an edge here and the shape of this edge. And this edge must have different color of this one too, because you have uh, one, two. So I need to fix the color. Okay? And I go on. For this one, It must be different of this one, this one, this one. But it must be also, the color must be also different of this one. It must be also different of this one because it is one, two. And also different from this one because it is one. And I think then we need another color. Okay? Now I consider this one. 
The column must be different of this one, this one, and this one. Because distance 2, different of this one. Different of this one, distance 2. You have 1, 2. This one must be different of this one. So I need to see that. Then for this one, we can see easily that we need a different color also, and here it is like. Okay? And this graph is really color. So the condition is very strong. And uh, so we call the strong chromatic index is the smallest integer k such that g admits a strong k edge color. And it is easy to see that uh, this uh, strong uh, edge chromatic number is uh, also a coloring for the graph, for the line graph. For example, I draw the line graph of this graph. How I draw the line graph? I put a vertex on each edge. Okay? And I have an edge between two vertices if they are I don't do the same vertex. So it might be an edge here, an edge here, an edge. Okay? So here. So the red graph is a line graph, the white graph. And you see this coloring is the coloring of the vertices. And what we ask, we ask that if the vertices has distance 2, then the colors are different. So it is the same thing as to try to color up the line graph with a true distance coloring. It means the coloring of the square. So, the strong chromatic index is equal to the chromatic uh, number of the square of the line graph. And this notion were introduced by Fouquet and Jolivet. And Fouquet and Jolivet are, uh, were researchers in France, in Le Mans, near Paris. Not far Paris. Now, I consider this, this graph. So assume that if delta is the maximum degree, of g, assume that I have an edge with the gray delta here. So what I can say, I can say that when I want to have a strong edge, a strong coloring of the edges, this guy must have a color different of this one, this one, this one. So I have delta minus one guys here. And these guys must have color different of this one. I have delta minus one. So it means that the key prime SG is bigger or equal to uh, twice delta minus one plus one. Okay, so it is equal to two delta minus one. So I have an overbound. So when we have when we have this this it means an edge with two vertices having degree delta maximum degree delta we must have at least this number of color but in graph we have to consider only this it means you consider the maximum of the degree 
being an extremity, extremities of an edge. In this case, we call sigma g the maximum, the maximum of the sum of degree of the extremities of an edge minus one. And it is clear that the strong chromatic index must be at least sigma g. And it was proved by Faudry, Shep, Biafas, Duza that it is exactly equal to, uh, to sigma t when t is a tree. So the tree is proved. That's the following strong chromatic index. Index is equal to sigma t. Okay, for the upper bound. Okay, for the upper bound. I have to redraw this drawing. You will help me, perhaps. Thanks. So I have delta minus one here, delta minus one, delta minus one edge, delta minus one, yeah, delta minus one. Okay, so I will try to color the graph by greedy algorithms. What I will do, simply I will uh, put an order on the edges and then I will color the edges. And uh, so, what happened? Now consider this edge here. Assume that we have colored all these uh, edges in a good way. So to color this edge, we must have how many, how many colors? We need at least delta minus one plus delta minus one. Plus delta minus one uh, delta minus one, delta minus one for this guy it must be different of this. And twice. So, what it means? It means that if I have at least this number of colors plus one, then I will be able to color this guy. Okay. So it means it is exactly. Uh, okay. So twice. Uh, Delta minus one. <coughs> so this is, uh, so help me because I will make a mistake, I'm not sure. So it is equal to two, uh, delta two square minus uh, two delta. Okay, so if I want to color this edge, I must have enough color. And I must have at least all this number of colors plus one. And in this case, I will be able to color the graph. Then this is the upper part. But there is a gap between the minimum and the maximum that I show you. Okay. So, uh, uh, there is a nice conjecture uh, posed by Erdős and Nechetri in the 88. It was revisited by uh, Fodrich and Kiafas in 2019. And he proposed the following conjecture. If G is a graph with maximum degree delta, then the strong chromatic index is at most 5 over 4 delta square if delta is even, and one over four, five times delta square minus two plus one, other one. If it is that, if it is one. Okay, and they give example where uh, these bonds are reached. I will show you how it works when we take delta even. If delta is even, assume that delta is equal to two k. Then what we do, we take five independent sets 
I1, I2, I3, I4, I5. And each independent set has k elements. Okay, so I have k elements, k vertices here, k vertices here, and k vertices here, k vertices here, and k vertices. Then I put all the possible edges between any uh, between two uh, consecutive independent set on the cycle C5. So for example, between this guy, this set of vertices, and this set of vertices, I will have all the possible edges. Okay. And I do the same here, the same here, and the same here, and the same here. So I have somehow uh, a C5, so a, a, a cycle of length 5, and each vertex is replaced by this uh, uh, ii, this uh, independent set. So, what we have first to observe? We have to observe that if I want to have a strong edge coloring of this graph, then an edge here must have a color different of any edge here between the uh, intersect. Okay. And moreover, an edge here must have a color different of an edge here because it is distance two. You have one edge here, one edge here, one edge here. So any edge here must have a color different of this one, this one, and also of any of this one and any of this one. Okay. So what it means? It means that I have uh, how many? edges there. And when I will have the number of edges, then I will I will have the number of needed colors to color the graph. Okay? So number of edges. Uh, I have in between here I have k square k square edges. So I have five k square edges. In total. That's the number of of edges on the graph. I call it C5. And it is exactly the number of needed colors. <laughs> then what is this? Uh, so delta is equal to 2k. So it is 5 tan delta square over 4. And this is the bar. Okay. So the conjecture is very interesting and very simple, in fact, and we have a very nice example when it is reached. So it would be nice to prove this. But I think that we didn't. We are far from these results. So in fact, the Molloy and Reed in 1997 proved that if delta is, is enough large, then the strong chromatic index of the graph is at most 1.998 data squared. Then uh, Anderson and Orak proved that uh, if you have a graph with maximum degree less or equal to 3, then uh, the graph admits a strong 10 edge color. And this is the best possible because for this graph, I think you will be able to see that we need 10 colors. Okay, because each guys, each edge is at distance 2 from any other. So, and constant in 2006 proved that if the, the maximum degree is less than 4, then he has a 22 edge coloring. So, it is very big. And uh, Faudre and it all proved that if a planar graph has maximum degree delta, then uh, the strong chromatic index of the graph is at most 4 delta plus 4. And it is a very nice proof. So, I think that we'll do it for you. So how, how the proof is very simple and I think that you will see the beauty of this theory of color. So how we prove this uh, delta for delta plus 4? First of all, we have to know that uh, if G is planar,
then we know by using theorem that it is delta plus one h column. What it means, it means that I have a proper edge coloring of the graph with at most delta plus one color. Okay? So I consider uh, such a coloring of the graph, the planar graph. So I have delta plus one color. So I will have, I will consider each color class. So I have color class H1, color class of H H2, and H delta plus one. Then I have this x, and what we do? We consider the graph obtained from h, I will consider h1, from h1, or h i, by uh, a, new, a new graph obtained by replacing each edge of the color class by a vertex, we know that these edges are independent because it is a color class. So, what we do, we put an edge, a vertex there, and we put an edge if there is some other edge in between. If, for example, in the graph there is an, an edge between this edge and this edge, then we put an edge. In fact, you can consider that by contracting the edges of the color class. And then you obtain a new graph. This graph is planar. Then it is for colorable. Okay. So this graph is for colorable. What it means? It means that if you take now, now this color for each set of uh, edge of the color class, you can color by four colors in such a way that if two edges are at distance two, they are different colors. Okay. So how many colors you need? You need four times delta plus one color in total. This means four delta plus one. Okay? This is very simple. And we can extend this proof for the K5 minor 3 graph very easily because we know that if the graph is K4 minor 3, then it is a delta plus 1 edge colorable by the Zinke theorem. And if you make the same things, then you will obtain a K4 minor 3, and it is also for color. Then it's okay. And if you take a, a planar average girl 37, then we know that it is 3 edge colorable. Then we have this. Uh, uh, well. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. Rochem and Balikov uh, prove that if the graph is out of planar with maximum degree delta, then the strong chromatic index is at most three delta minus three. Mm. Out of planar means a planar graph where we can draw all the vertices on the exterior faces with edge uh, between, without intersection. Okay? And uh, uh, Okar, Oshem and Valikov uh, were students in, in Gorbuk. Okay? And uh, in fact, uh, there is a new paper on archive by uh, Udak and Hall and Liste, and they prove that if G is planar graph with maximum degree delta in your six, at least six, then the strong chromatics index is less or equal to three times the maximum degree plus six, but it is improved now by, by uh, Okar and Petru, Valikov, they prove three delta plus one. And it would be nice to have something about the GERS uh, five. For GERS five, if you take a planar graph with GERS five, the GERS is the size of the smallest cycle of the graph, or the smallest cycle of the graph, that if you have a planar graph, then, then they prove that it is 3 delta plus 1, and it would be nice to have for 5. For 5, there is only for maximum degree of delta equal 4, and then they prove 3 delta plus 1. So, but it is open. 
Okay, so for plan above. And now I am coming in something more, more technique perhaps I will try to do it. In fact, we want to color the planar graphs. And uh, uh, we consider uh, the family of planar graphs with maximum degree at most delta, with delta this three. And what we were able to prove with uh, Gerard Chang, Michael Montassier, Arnaud Péché, we were able to prove that every graph planar with maximum degree delta and with girls at least 10 delta plus 46, then we have a strong 2 delta minus 1 edge coloring. Or 2 delta minus 1 is the bound that I show you at the beginning of the talk. When delta is at this four. So this is, in fact, Borodin and Ivanova prove something close, but we improve this result of Borodin and you know, Ivanova when delta is bigger than six, greater than six. So I will show you only the idea of the proof of this result. In fact, our proof is based on the use of the odd graph and the properties. Odd graph, I think if you are doing graph theory, I think that you know uh, odd graphs and you will see one special one. So what is odd graph? Odd graph is uh, you take a set of uh, 1, 2, 2, n minus 1. And you take the subsets of the set of size n minus 1. And there is an edge between two subsets if the corresponding subsets are disjoint. So, you know this graph. This is odd graph. But then it is odd graph for n equals 3, so you take the uh, integer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You take subset of size 2, and then you have 10 subsets of size 2, and then you have an edge if they are digital. And what I do, I put on the edge between two vertices, I put the integer missing because they are disjoint. It is, it is subset of size 2. You have a set, a set of size 5, so there is one missing. And I put here, or for example, it is a set 1, 2, it is a set 4, 5. 3 is an other element, is not in these two. It is out, so we put it in. So I have a coloring of the edges. It is a proper color. And it is easy to see that it is a strong edge color. You have a proper coloring. You have a proper coloring because that's all different subsets here. This is a proper coloring. And I cannot have the same color here and here. Because, for example, if I have, uh, if I assume that here I have the color one and the color one, what it means? If I have the color 1 and the color 1, it means that this element is not in the set here. This element is not in the set here of the graph. So if it, it cannot be uh, here, it is 4, 5, for example, that's OK. Then here, it must be something more than uh, 2, 3, because it must be disjoint. OK? Then what happened? And if it is 2, 3, and 4, 5, then it will be 1, then it will not be a color of the two edges. Okay? So, when I consider the problem, in fact, I was inspired by the work that we did with uh, Yarix several years before, about homomorphism and uh, uh, stronger uh, and oriented coloring. And, uh, what is the idea? So, first of all, the graph are regular, of girls and 2 and minus 1, and uh, even girls is 6. Moreover, it is distance transitive. You can find it in bigs. 
And in fact, I will not do the proof exactly like that. I will try to explain you here. Actually, what we do, we consider, we, we, so in the odd graph, the coloring that I gave you before, the coloring that I gave you before, this one, is a strong graph. So the idea is to have no more the graph in this graph. But to have an homomorphism locally injected, it means if you have two different edges and send to one vertex, it will not map to the same. So that's right. So what we do for that, we take we have uh, we take a minimum counter example, okay? And what we say, so there is some simple fact that, for example, there is no, uh, in this counter example, there is no vertex at ascent to d minus 1 vertices of degree 1. So there is no such kind of things in the graph, in the minimum counter example. Because if it is the case, you remove it, it is the smallest graph, then it is strong edge colorable by these two that are minus one colors, then you can color this because how many you have how, how many forbidden colors you have for this guy? You have uh, one plus the time of minus one, so it is delta delta colors. So it remains because we want to prove two delta minus one, it remains delta minus one colors free, and you can color this. Okay, so there is no there is no such such vertex. So you consider the graph where you put out these kind of things, and then the, uh, the also the uh, vertex of the gray one. You have a, a edge, the smallest graph. And what we use, we use a very uh, folkloric uh, result that uh, if you have a simple planar graph with maximum degree at least two. Uh, minimum degree at least two with girls at least five d plus one. The girls of the graph. What means the girls? The size of the smallest side. Then there is a path of length d. There is a, in the graph. There is a path with vertices with d vertices. Of the grade, of the grade two. Okay, so it is. So in the graph, you must find such kind of things. Okay, it is easy to see. I think uh, some ID. Uh, what you do? You have the girls five D plus one. What you do? It means that you uh, this graph has maximum uh, minimum degree at least two. So what you do? If you take the graph, plan RG, you erase all the vertices of the grade 2, and you replace each vertices of the grade 2 by an edge. So you have then a graph with a degree, a minimum degree at least 3. You know that the graph is planar, then there is a face of length at plus 5. If the face is of length at plus 5, if the girth is at least 5 degrees plus 1, it means that you have two vertices originally in the graph. And you have at least a path of length. Okay? So the idea is then. I want. I will not go in having the technical things, but I want to try to extract the main thing. So what we do? 
the girth of the planograph that I consider to prove the theorem is that ten delta plus forty six. Then, by this little observation, if we know that, that D is equal to 2 delta plus 9, then we know that in this graph, it is a planar graph, there is a path with induced path with two vertices. And how many two vertices? We have 2 delta plus 9, 2 vertices. So I do it by induction. I say, okay, I want to color my my graph with two delta minus one color. The edges to have a strong edge color. What I do? Okay, minimum contour example. I know that there is a path. I remove the path. Okay, I remove the path. Then the graph has this uh, two delta minus one edge coloring. Strong edge color. In fact, this 2 delta minus 1 strong edge coloring is a mapping uh, in uh, homomorphism, it's special homomorphisms in O delta, the odd graph. The odd graph, we saw before that the odd graph has this strong edge color. Then what we do, we know that by induction that, that my smallest graph, G minus this path, I will call it G prime, map into this one. And if I call this path the extremity of the path by A and B, then what we have? We know so my graph G prime. That G minus this path go into O delta. I would say it is informally said. And uh, the extremity of the path, so going to O delta, and the extremity of the path, A and B, are somewhere here. And I assume that it is a good strong edge coloring, so it is locally injective, so it means it is strong edge coloring. The mapping, and when I consider, so R from this one is going to this vertex of, of O delta. And what I do, I have this strong edge column. What I want, I want to extend this strong edge column to the path. So what I need to do only, I have only to prove that in the O delta, there is a path of length that I give here, 2 delta plus 9. Okay? So I have to find such a pass. And if I find such a pass, then I will map the pass on this pass. Then I will have a strong edge coloring because it is a strong edge coloring. That's the way. Okay, so it is only the ID, but we use this ID already before for by homomorphism, when you want to prove this, then you do like that, you prove that there is some configuration of the graph, you remove the configuration, then you color up the graph, then you put again this configuration. And here it is easy because it is a path. Okay? So we did like that, and it is somehow uh, more uh, technical things. But uh, I think even when we, when we catch the idea, the main idea of this way, Pass. You prove that there is a pass with vertices of, with vertices of degree 2, then you remove it, then after that you color it, and then you put again this pass to extend the color of that side. Okay? Okay, so that's uh, what we did. And uh, there is a very nice conjecture of what we I didn't succeed. Prove it, we didn't succeed. It is a fascinating. Prove that if graph is planar, subcubic. Subcubic means that 
the maximum degree is at most 3. So you have vertex of degree 2 or 3. Prove that you need many time products. And it is the example that I gave at the beginning of the group for this graph with night products. Okay, so it is nice conjecture. We tried to prove it, we didn't succeed. I think it is a challenge. I think I like the simple conjecture in fact. I like the, when it is easy and to say and easy to explain the conjecture. It is it is I think it is beautiful. So what we did, so we were not able to prove it, we tried to do it. If we don't succeed, I tried to do it with uh, Petru Valikov, uh, and all these young people, and, and good people, and interesting people. And I enjoy it very much to work with them. And, uh, it's nice. I think research is, uh, for me, it is a social, social event. I am not alone in my corner. I like to work with people. So what we did, we introduced this maximum average degree. Maximum average degree is very well known, parameter. Now many people are dealing with this parameter. And uh, this parameter is exactly twice the number of edges divided the number of vertices for any subgraph of the graph, and we take the maximum. And this parameter, you can compute it in polynomial time. It is proved by James Jensen and Toft. And when I, I spoke about that with uh, Sasha Kostochka, he told me, oh, but we prove it already also, that this is polynomial. And also, we have, I think, on the net, you can find uh, such uh, uh, proof uh, by uh, Nat Cohen. And it is on the net of this uh, fact that it is polynomial. And it is very well known that uh, if uh, you have a relationship between the girth of the graph and the maximum average degree of the graph, if you have a planar graph with girth t, then the maximum average degree is at most twice the number, the, twice the girth, divided by t minus 2. And uh, what uh, Petrou and Hervé proved, they proved that if the graph is subcubic, and the maximum average degree is less than 36 above 13, then the strong chromatic index is less or equal to 9. So it is not the conjecture, but it is something. And so for planar graph, it's given as if the girth is 8, at least 8, then the strong chromatic index is at most 9. Mm. Then we improve it by. Uh, uh, biggest man, like 2007. And so before it was just 8, now we have this result for just 7. So it is decreasing. If you can go for just 4, it would be nice. Okay. So uh, we proved that if a planner, I will finish my talk by this uh, uh, theorem. We prove that if G is planar subcubic with girl G at is 6, then the chromatic index is as close to 9. In fact, we prove more. We prove that if the graph, if the, sub, if the planar graph subcubic has no size of, of <coughs> size 4 and 5, then the strong edge chromatic index is as close to 9. And in fact, what we do, we take a minimum counter example. We prove that there is no, in the minimum computer example, there is no uh, vertice of the ray 1 because of what I do. We put out this vertex and we can recolor it with uh, nine color. If we have two adjacent vertices also, it is not possible. It's the minimum computer example. Why? Because if you have uh, two vertices of the grid 2 in the graph, in the minimum computer example, what you do? I don't know, I remove this edge, then it is a minimum contour example, then I can color it with natural color. The edges to have a strong edge color. Okay? Then what I do? This little graph, G minus E, is nine strong edge coloring. What I do? 
first have a color this guy to have a good a color different of this one. So how many uh, how many color I need? So I, I I remove the color of this guy. If I recolor it, it must be different of this guy. So white color. Then this two three four five six seven. So I have two color remaining. I can color this guy in such way that it is different of this one. Then now I color this one. It must be, if I color this, how many forbidden colors there are? There are one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have three colors I can color. So there is no such pass with two adjacent to my so we can prove also that there is no such way, six. Because you remove this one, you recolor, and so on. Okay. Then we prove that then it is more difficult. It's more difficult. We prove that if the minimum quantum example cannot have a six cycle, so it is subcapigraph, it means the maximum degree is three. So there is no subcycle with one vertex of degree. It's not possible. Then the proof of this is easy then. Why? Because what you say. Okay. What I do? Again, I erase all the vertices of the grid 2. I replace by, so if I have a vertex of the grid 2 in my graph, minimum contour example, I remove it and I put an edge. The graph is planar. Then the graph must have a face of size at most five. Okay. We have a cubic graph because we erase all the two vertices. So this this five face, how it can come? It's come from the original graph by erasing these two vertices and replacing by an edge. Okay, it cannot come from seven because then you must have two vertices. That means that you have uh, this configuration and this configuration is forbidden. Okay, or this. So it cannot come from seven or more, of the cycle of length seven or more. So it can come only from a six vertex, a six phase, with a vertex of degree two. Then we prove that there is no such cycle. Then it is not possible, then the theorem is proved. Okay? Then, we, uh, we are dealing with a uh, big graph. We improve somehow this uh, max, uh, maximum average degree uh, things. Sometimes it is tight, sometimes it is not tight, so perhaps we can improve it. So I let you, uh, if you want, to find best results. So I finish my talk now.
for anybody, yeah, for any uh, other sentencing uh, things. And uh, it is strange because the most difficult things to prove is when it is cubic. And this is the case, I think, in the cubic graph, it is somewhat difficult to think about this. I don't know, it is a... Uh, I think the conjecture of uh, Yannick is nice. It's sufficient to try to work on. No hay más preguntas? Yeah. Is there any spectral uh, point of view of these problems? No. No? I don't know anything about that. Perhaps it would be Good idea. Good idea. Um, I don't know. It is point of view. Uh, yeah. Anyway, the, the distance to constraint is somehow difficult to manage. Perhaps when you are considering the point of view.